this morning, uh, I have a message that I don't know how to categorize, categorize them sometimes. I, I, I say powerful, I say harsh, I say this and I say that. But I will be very blunt today, as I think I always am, because the hour that we're living in is an hour where we must hear it straight. Uh, blunt is a good word. I mean, we need it uh, in the power of love, but we need truth. Because truth is the only power of the universe that will transform a person that comes from the word of God. And the word of God is still transforming lives. It is still performing miracles. When God said, let there be light, light never ended. Why? Because the word never ended. The commandment of God never ceased and therefore, that should build your faith and my faith that if God spoke something in your life, he will finish it and he will supply every need and he will make a way when there seems to be no way. And I feel like somebody needed to hear that today, that his word is a word of longevity because it's an eternal word. Let me say it again. It's an eternal word. Some people I know, I couldn't hang a ornament on their words. I couldn't hold a feather on their words because their words aren't strong enough. But I serve a God today and you serve a God today who's more than enough. And so this morning, I just feel the preach in me and the unction of the Holy Ghost to bring this message again going around to the beginning statement very bluntly. And here's what the Lord said during my time of prayer. He said, America, your journey into Babylon is complete. You've arrived at your destination. Nothing and no one can stop you from reaching your full potential within the kingdom of darkness. The stage is set. The players are in position, and the script has been written. Your lust for sin has quickened your demise. Your rejection of truth has fueled the fires of hell within. But you have no fear, because your pride has blinded you and has made you drunk, and you are out of control, reckless and hell bound on the Babylonian Express. Father God, thank you again for this morning and this day. I ask that you hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that no man will remember my name or in the name of this church, but will remember the name that is above every name, and at that name, every single knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. amen. The title that he gave me is called the Babylonian Express. The Babylonian Express. We are on that train. We are on that direct line, if you will, into the destiny that has been written about America, Mystery Babylon. You can argue and you can use theology in many different ways and twist it to try to say something different than what the Bible says. But when you piece it together in truth and in honesty and integrity, you will find that it is absolutely truth that we are mystery Babylon. And we are on this express. We are on this crazy train that is leading us further into the abyss and the kingdom of darkness. I have never seen a time in my life of such ungodliness. I have never experienced, and I'm the youngest one in the room. Uh, we just had a birthday girl here, so you can't, you don't qualify. Uh, <laughs> uh there's no doubt in my young life, as I have gone through the Rolodex of my mind, including my own sin, 
and I think about where I used to be and where the world used to be when I was involved in those things, and you can't recognize the two any longer. Uh, and the sad part of this picture is the fact that the church of Jesus Christ is now the mirror image of the world. And it's very hard to tell the difference between the world and the church, a nightclub and the house of God, a charlatan witch and a pastor, a feel-good philosophy teaching type of person who has humanism in their mouth. And the church leadership of our hour. So it's the lines of blurred. And there's been a mingling and a mixing. And the church of Jesus Christ has done all that it possibly can do to compromise. And when you compromise, that leaven gets inside of you and it leavens the whole lump. And it ruins you. And I want to tell believers today to stand strong in the power of God's might, live in purity and righteousness and holiness, and if people want to go to hell, let them go. If that's what they want to do, do what you can to rescue, do what you can to witness, do what you can to love, do what you can to intercede and to block their path. But at the end of the day, if that's what they want to do, don't go with them. Do you hear me today? I'm talking to the singles. I'm talking to people that are looking for friendships My friendships and my relationships and my fellowship doesn't go with the world. They're at opposite of what I think. They're at opposite of what I believe. They are at opposite of what I feel. I wish I had somebody help me today. So the Babylonian express all aboard. I'm not getting on it, but that's the sound that you hear. Go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah, he's back from his winter break, fall break. Jeremiah chapter 23, the Holy Spirit reminded me, I preached Jeremiah 23 about a month ago. And in somewhat questioning why the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah, the Lord put in my heart that when he warns more than once, you need to listen, that he doesn't waste his words and that repeating is never good. Let me try that again. For God to repeat things is never good. You can study it through the Bible. And so he brought me back to Jeremiah chapter 23 concerning the Babylonian Express. Verse 1. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep Of my pasture, saith the Lord. Whoa, watch out. On this Babylonian Express, we have the conductors who are the leadership of the church of Jesus Christ as well as the nation. And God has a very unique way of dealing with leadership. In fact, he will smite the leadership to save the people whom they lead. That is his style. And he judges leadership in a certain way that is more severe. For the Bible tells us those that teach this word of God 
and teach these timeless truths shall receive a greater judgment. And so you may wonder why we're seeing leadership dealt with in the house of God in a severe way, and it's because God cares for the people. He cares for the sheep. I don't think that we as pastors and as shepherds reveal the depth of how God feels about you and how much he loves you because I know that's true because today's pastors are nothing more than playboys and they stand up before you parading their luxury and parading their prosperity and parading their PX90 bodies. Or something like that. I prefer body by Captain Crunch. Is anybody, Flo, take it easy now. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had somebody help me today. Spring is in the air. <laughs> Say, can he make it back out of that? Yeah, I'll get back out of that somehow. But they parade themselves, and it's more like pageantry in the house of God. And it's always me and I. When the reality is, it's about you and him. It has always been that way. It's always been that gospel message and the message of discipleship is about you becoming closer to God and having that awesome relationship. It's always been about the shepherd pushing you further into the sheepfold and per further into the relationship with the great shepherd. It has always been the mandate and the mission and the assignment of the pastor to do that. But we've lost it in the house of God because we want to be famous and we want to be promoted and we want to be like the Kardashians and we want to be like these people. We want a reality program. Pump up my pastor. No, why don't we let the air out, dude? Why don't we try that? Maybe we can get you in the building. Maybe you won't need 16 bodyguards. Come on, somebody. Who, who would want to kill you? You ain't even doing nothing. You ain't even saying nothing. You're not even contrary to the culture of our day. Who would want to take you out? I wish I had some help here. Whoa! Unto the pastors that destroy and they scatter. Say, Pastor, how do they destroy? Well, one of the ways the Bible says is that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Knowledge meaning intimacy. Again, we sing worship songs about ourselves worshiping God. And set of songs about him and how we adore him. Oh, how I adore you. Oh, how I exalt you. Oh, how I worship you. Oh, how holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We have made a mockery out of the house of God. And we've made a mockery out of the doctrine of Christianity and what it's like to be a true New Testament disciple, a carrier of the cross of Jesus Christ, a person who has splinters on their back and splinters in their hands because they're carrying this truth wherever they may go and they're not afraid of any devil. They're not afraid of any demon. They're not afraid of their culture. They're not afraid of trends because truth and love is their banner. We've got to have it again in America. We've got to have this truth resounding and pounding in our hearts and our ears and our spirits as we rise up to meet the challenge of the hour. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor. You notice he says it's my pastor. Listen to me, preacher, if you're watching me right now, you don't own nothing. I said, you don't own nothing. 
You don't own anything when it comes to the house of God. In fact, you don't even own the shoelace that's on your shoe. And so it goes to the sheep as well who think they've got ownership of everything else and want to tell the pastor what to do. Watch out now. The church is confused. And the church has been blinded and it is drunk because of pride. I'll tell you why. The reason for that is we've been on the Babylonian Express ourselves. We have partaken with the world. We have drank from the same cup, the same poison. And we have been bewitched. I'm trying to get out of verse 1 if you can't tell. Woe. Woe. Because I think that we look at this and we don't understand woe. We don't under, understand, we don't comprehend the severity of the sovereignty of God and we don't comprehend his judgment. I know that's true because if we really did, I believe that we would treat this Bible a lot differently. We would treat the grounds of God, the house of God, the, the things of God more delicately and more respectively than what we do. More respect and honor. I'm not talking about making a building a shrine or a museum. What I'm saying is I come into the house of God hungry. I come into the house of God thirsty. I leave the place needing more. I got to get to my prayer closet at home. I got to find a place with my master. I got to find a place at his feet. I got to cry out to an almighty God and say, God, I need you more than the life that I live, more than the breath that I breathe, more than than the food that I eat, more than the clothes that I wear. Oh, God, I need you living in me and moving. I need you, God. I need to feel your touch. See, we, we've lost that. Verse 2. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you scattered, you've scattered my flock and you've driven them away and have not visited them. I preached this chapter a little while ago on the message called the church of Sodom and how the fact that the pastors did not visit their people in the sense that they did not care for them and bring them to a place of comfort. Just a couple of days ago, the number one Google trend was for prayer and hope. Are you listening to me? The earth is crying out for prayer and for hope. And you can't find it on our Christian television stations. You can't find it in our ministry programs because we're more concerned about ourselves and what we're becoming and what we want rather than the cares and concerns of the people. And I'm telling you, self-help humanistic gospel is not the answer for those that need help. Hope is found in Jesus Christ and him alone. Hope is found in the power of the resurrection. Hope is found in the power and the adumen of the Holy Ghost. Hope is found when you tell folks the truth and you give them the words of life. That's hope. It gives them an expectancy. It gives them an expected end. That's what hope means. Not tie a knot at the end and hang on, baby. How many of y'all know it starts to get rough in storms and you begin to swing back and forth, but hope says, I'm not just going to hold on. I'm going to make it all the way through because greater is he that lives in me than he that's in this world, and I am an overcomer through the faith of Christ and the power of the resurrection. So he said, I'm against your pastors. You scattered them. You have driven them away. 
Let me tell you something. There should be no reason for that to be the trend on any search engine because it should already be offered through the airways of Christianity. It should already permeate through our neighborhoods. It should already be known that you have to do, all you have to do is go down to Ignited Church. All you have to do is go down to the church down the road. All you have to do is call this number or go to this place or visit this website and you will find hope. Hope. All you have to do is bend a knee and confess with your tongue and you will find hope. Something is wrong with the message. Something is wrong with the transmission. Something is happening in the world today where there's a disconnect for those that are helpless and those that are living in a helpless situation. You've got to go to a computer to ask for help. I don't think you understood what I'm trying to convey to you today. It's insanity that we'd have to try to search out an answer when the answer is sitting right here in the B-I-B-L-E. It is sitting right here in your mouth, the very words of your heart, the very power of the truth that's inside of you. I'll give you hope. I'll give you prayer. I'll believe for you. But I'm going to tell you in the process, you must get rid of sin. You must get rid of degradation. You must pull yourselves away from the world. Push back the table and say, I've had enough of your garbage. Is anybody here today? We've learned a lot about this in the pandemic. A lot of people aren't eating as much garbage as you used to. Help me out, church. I'm waiting for it to transition and translate into the church, not eating the Christian spiritual junk food that's out there. I'm waiting on that. You say, Pastor, how will you know? Because I'll see a fit and trim body. I'll see a body that loves God. I'll see a church that's hungry for the things of God. I'll see people who are thirsty for the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's good preaching. Let me get past my introduction here and I'll try to preach some more. And have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. Again, we don't believe in judgment because the progressive Christianity, which is no more than Satanism, and the rational thinking that Satanism brings which, if you don't know this, Satanism is now mainstream. It's mainlined. It's no longer in the closet. It is no longer in the hidden places, in the dark alleys of a smoke shop. It is right there in the open, in sports, in entertainment, and unfortunately, in the house of God. But he said, I will visit upon you your evil. I will visit evil upon you for your doings. Because of the witchcraft, because of the unrighteousness, and because of the things that you've allowed to come into the house of God. Again, as I began my message, I alluded to the fact that The people of God are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge comes from the teacher, from the preacher, from the one who is supposed to bring them into revelation, is supposed to bring them into truth. My job is not to become popular with you. My job is to become proficient with you in the word of God and pursuant of the presence of God. My job is to carry you and walk with you, if you will, on our journey into his presence. That's my job. But we have lost it again. And Jeremiah is bringing a strong rebuke to these pastors and saying to them, this evil will come upon you. As I mentioned a moment ago, progressive Christianity does not believe in judgment. We do not believe that God will deal with us. We believe that God is the grandpa of heaven sitting upon the rocking chair like a cracker barrel. Come on, somebody. And he's just doting over his creation and he's accepting them for whatever they do. By the way, they teach us and tell us that we're all God's children. 
And if God is such a God of love, then why would he allow these things to happen? May I remind you in the entire world that he is a holy God, that sin cannot dwell in him, and sin does not dwell around him. Though he sees sin and he understands it, with the eyes of love and grace, he provided a way. He provided a sacrifice. His name is Jesus. And all men must come to that saving knowledge of Jesus, and you and I do not have the right to distort, to pollute, or to change that truth in any form or fashion. And to do so does not grant you entrance into his kingdom, into heaven. The only way is the Bible way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I've preached more Bible to you than most preachers have all year. Now, tomorrow or next week and come up on Resurrection Day, they'll get real holy and talk about the cross and the grave. Are you here today? And then go hide eggs. I I don't have time for this. Somebody just threw a shoe at, at home. Come on, somebody. You know it's the truth. Our message is mixed because our minds are mixed. We have a mixture of the world. We have a mixture of iron and clay. We have a mixture of doctrines of devils and truth, and we're all mixed up in this Babylonian express, diving deeper into the kingdom of darkness Behold, I will visit upon you the evils of your doing. You see, this is why men are falling in the house of God, in the church of God. This is why exposure is happening. You read it almost every day. There's a reason for it. God is merciful and God is love and God wants everybody to be reconciliated unto himself and and to be restored. But I'm telling you, watching me right now, if you're playing with pet sin and hiding in the deep, dark crevices of life, God will expose you and deal with you. He wants to do it privately. He wants to do it quietly. But he will expose men because of the love of the sheep, the love of the heart of the shepherd he loves people and he loves the shepherd but he will deal with them we need to hear this message in america i don't hear many fathers doing this anymore you hear somebody fall and next thing you know you they come out with a video and they talk about all the reasons that happened and and the the, the environment around them that caused it. My pastor taught me this, honey, you didn't fall into sin, you dove into sin. You built the Olympic sized diving board, you got on the end of it and you dove into the sin. You don't just fall into sin, buddy. You do it. You plan it. Especially men of God. Especially the house of God. Because you know better. And you got to get through the blood. And you got to get through the Holy Ghost. And you got to get through the word. And you got to get through prayers. And you got to get through your conscience. And you got to get through people before you ever fall into that sin. Don't give me that. I was weak. No, you planned it. You wanted to be weak. Man, I just feel good this morning. Let it rain outside. I got you guys here for a while. You ain't going to get your hair do wet. Ushers, take the umbrellas. Don't let them leave. Is anybody here? Ronnie, lock that door if you don't mind. And I will visit evil upon the... Somebody on the live stream is going to believe that. That guy is a tyrant. No, I'm not. (laughs) <laughs> our greeting lady's not here anyway so she she wouldn't she wouldn't stop you watch this i will visit upon them the evil why why pastor is this happening why oh you know and then, and then when they they make their excuses of why they send they get all kinds of responses oh we understand and we're with you and and you'll recover Listen, I'm, I'm about reconciliation. I want to see people restored. I want to see people renewed. I want to see them healed. Believe me. 
But I have a problem when they lie into you. I got a problem when they fool in the people. I got a problem when they are wolves in sheep's clothing. I got a problem when the discernment ain't working in the house of God. And they sitting up there flipping and tripping and doing everything that they're doing. And the church is doing nothing about it. And the leaders around them are patting them on the head and patting them on the back like it was a good score. Come on now. And they're all together. They're all living in the same culture. And they're covering each other's. Mm, let me move on. Are you here? And we got no fathers. We got no. If you grading me for my grammar, that ain't too good. But we got no. We got no fathers. We don't have any fathers. We don't have any fathers. Is that better for you? You think I'm joking? I've had people complain about the way I speak English. I don't speak good English. Is anybody here? As long as you understand where I'm coming from, that's all that matters to me. And as long as your life is changed, and as long as you get closer to God, that's the best I can give you. Is anybody here? hanging around these guys. We can't find fathers to love us and tell us, I'm telling you, we need to go back to basic training in the house of God. I'm not talking about the modern basic training. I'm talking about the real basic training when you got into the face and you got into the heart and you got into the suke of the individual and you tell them what is right and what is wrong and you rewire their thinking by truth. Now we don't do that. You, you can't touch the recruit. You can't scream and holler. You can't do anything to be vocal. So you allow them to go down their merrily way into the abyss. But I'm here to tell you that's not going to happen at this church. That's not going to happen in this ministry. I will love you and I will tell you the truth. You may not like me, but you're going to get the truth. Let's move to verse 9. Somebody said, thank God we're moving along. Yes. Verse 9, and my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. And all my bones shake. I'm like a drunken man and like a man whom wine has overcome. Jeremiah says, I'm all bent out of shape. Elvis said, I'm all shook up. Come on, somebody. I'm all out of shape. I, I, I'm all messed up. Why, 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 Jeremiah, are you messed up? Uh, is the offerings low? Jeremiah, did you get too many thumbs down on Instagram and Facebook and whatever media platform you're on? Uh, 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 what happened, Jeremiah? Did you Bentley get a flat tire? Jeremiah, I'm trying to understand why you acting like a drunk man because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. Jeremiah was saying, I'm all messed up. I'm out of position. I'm out of joint. My heart is messed up. My mind is messed up because of the holiness of his words. The Lord has spoken, and I can't find anybody to say it themselves. I can't find anybody to live it. I can't find anybody to pray it. I can't find anybody to preach it. I can't find any church to be involved in holiness and righteousness. I'm all messed up because of your words. We don't tremble in the house of God anymore. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. When you fear God, you begin to become wise. That's why we're so dumb today. Somebody said one time, we're, we're, you know, dumb people have been around a long time. Yeah, it may be true, but they're increasing by the bunches. Why? Because you don't have no fear of God. You've made your life a God unto yourself. You made your belly a God unto yourself. You've made your appetites and your lust and everything else a God unto you. And as I said last week, the end of man is always destruction. 
without an almighty God being there and guiding by the power of his Holy Spirit. Wine hath overcome because of the, of, of the Lord and because of the, of, of the words of his holiness. Again, it's hard to find people in the house of God, let alone preachers on our radio stations and on our television stations who will talk about the holiness of God. They're afraid to. I'll tell you why they're afraid. They're afraid because there's too much progressive Christianity in the house. There's too much doctrines of devil. There's too many people in power in the house of God that are strangling the pastors and our seminaries are polluting the minds of these preachers with trendy cultural ideals and corporate things to make a church grow. I know, I've been to countless church growth conferences in my day. I've been to many seminars and learned the basics and how to build and all the things that corporate America was doing that the church adopted. Instead, they've lost the bedrock and the pillared foundational truths of prayer, of fasting, of love, of giving, and the other doctrines of truth that build his church. That's why we're weak. Bigger buildings, but we're weaker. Come on, somebody. Fancier preachers, but powerless. More seats and more people, nickels and noses, but less outreach and evidence of Christianity in our cities and communities. Jeremiah was messed up. I'm asking the church today, are you messed up by what you see in the world? Does it bother you what's going on in the house of God? And if it bothers you in the house of God, then get out of that house. Are you here today? Get out of that house. Many people that are attached and connected and part of this family of Ignited Church have left the corporate big box churches. And I salute them. Oh, I believe in the local church and I want you to be a part of the local church. But you don't go to a place for ritual and religious activities and calisthenics. You go to find a living God and you go to find a place of love. And you go to find a place to be recharged, renewed and refocused. And if you can't find that, stay at the house and find it in the Bible. Now, people won't like me for that, and that's okay. You don't like me for much. Verse 10. For the land is full of adulteries. Wait a minute. There's a connection here, as I made this point in the past, that Jeremiah was messed up. He was all shook up. He was bent out of shape because of the words of the holiness of God. And he knew that holiness was not being displayed in the pastor's ministries and not given to the people. Therefore, if it wasn't displayed, it wasn't obeyed. And if there's no obeying by the people of God, then the rest of the nation goes to hell too. That's the truth. America in its conditions and who we have in power now is not because of some shady deal. It's because of the condition of the church. We get what we deserve in leadership. We get what we have produced in the house of God. I didn't get a lot of amens, but it's the truth. And Jeremiah said the land is full of adulteries. What is that? He's speaking of idolatry, but he's also speaking of fornication. All you have to do in America is turn on your television set and you'll find enough skin and enough Come on, somebody. Enough adultery going on and fornication. You don't need the Playboy channel. I wish I had somebody to help me. 
you can turn on me TV. I don't know how that sounds over in California. I don't know if my brothers and sisters got me TV, but that's a channel. I mean, you could turn on the television and you find that being pumped into our mindsets and into our lives. And I'm not even talking about stuff that's going on on YouTube or any other channel that is in the internet. The stuff that our children are watching, the pollution that is coming out is absolutely staggering. And I only research a thimbleful of what's going on out there. And I cannot even mention to you the things that I know and the things that I come across. Number one, I don't have enough time in front of you. Number two, I'd probably get banned. Because there's so much garbage that is going on in the world. And I lay it down at the feet of the church because the church is not counteracting it. The church is not counter-revolutionary mindset. They're not coming against these things. We're just going along in the Babylonian Express saying, why can't we all just get along with one another and kumbaya, my Lord? And our children are being destroyed, whether it's through the transgender demon power that is crossing over our nation, affecting even small towns, or the LGBT barbecue militant demonic agenda. That's what it is. You can call it activism. You can call it all kinds of human rights, but it's from the pit is from hell. Just as fornication and adultery outside of marriage is. And Jeremiah on his level, on the scale of his day, was dealing with this and it messed him up because he said God is holy. His word is holy. But because you won't preach it, adulterers are in the land. Full. It amazes me how we cannot find, and I'm just talking about the church. Is this okay? I'm just talking about preachers because I is one. Mark me down. That was bad too, wasn't it? Bad grandma. Taking your star. Take my star, but don't take my goldfish. I love them little things. No sticker. Just give me my nap. Don't take my nap and I won't be grouchy and grumpy. <laughs> I have to do this because people, their fangs start hanging out and they're sharpening the floor when they walk. You know, they're messing up the floor when they walk out. They get all mad about it. But it's a reality. And I'm talking to the pastors because I am a pastor and we have a crisis in our leadership. We have a crisis in our churches because we're full of adulteries. I mentioned to you earlier about a pastor. I guess he's a pastor. I don't know. He's a Christian guru relationship guy. What is that? I don't know. That's what he is. He's a Christian relationship guru. Y'all know, y some of y'all know the guy's name. I'm not going to throw the name out there. You go research it. Just research Christian guru dude who got caught cheating on his wife. Got millions of followers hooked up with this girl, took her down to Miami, had a, had a wonderful time in the Lord. Beelzebub, that Lord, took her down there, said he'd been separated from his wife and boo-hoo, baha -boo did what they wanted to do, came back to Atlanta, did it again in the house while the family was gone. Are you listening to me? A relationship guru, a Christian dude, millions of followers, slick haired and shiny shoed dude. Listen, you better know who's preaching to you. You better know who's talking to you on YouTube. You better know something about the folks that you put in that stuff in your spirit. You better know because it may sound like God, but it ain't God inside. You better know who they are. Come spend some time with me. You want to question me. Come on in and see my life. 
It's transparent. Paul said to live your life openly, like a book for all men to read. You want to read? Come read. Are you here? Fornicating, but still doing ministry. He didn't confess until he was busted by the girl he slept with. Come on, somebody. And she went to a secular media outlet and exposed him. And when she exposed him, he came out and made a video of repentance. You're not listening to me. The land is full of adulterers. I will put evil on you for your doings. Now listen, he's a merciful God. I'm not telling you anything going to happen to anybody. I'm not the judge. I'm just telling you exposure comes and God will expose you. Now what he does with all that, that ain't up to me. I'm not a, thun a, a son of thunder. I'm not asking for fire to come down. That ain't my job. I'm asking for mercy, but I'm praying for the folks that that person deceived. And I pray if there's ever more devils in the closet, let it come out. On this Babylonian Express. You better get off of it. You better watch out for Christian television and Christian media sites. You better be careful. You better pray and say, God, is this, this is what we need to do. This is exactly what we need to do. God, is this person clean? That's the first thing you need to do. Instead of looking at their watch, come on, help me, church. The gold chain, the smooth mustache, every hair in place, the bulging muscles. You, don't, you all don't know what I'm talking about. That's exactly what sells today. I got bulges, baby. But they're from yeast rolls. Is anybody here today? <laughs> I wish I had somebody that loved me. But I'm working on it. I'm going to be all right. I've been married for 25 plus years. Is anybody here? I love my wife. I got no eye for no other. I'm not attempted. I'm not looking for nothing. I love her. I adore her. She is my best friend. You ain't going to find out I was, you know, I got six. Never mind. I'm, let me move on. <laughs> let, let, it, it's, 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 it's insanity. It, it's insanity. I, everybody's got a past. Everybody's got bad times. Everybody's got things they're not proud of. But I'm going to tell you something. When you make a commitment to Christ and a commitment to lead people, you must be clean. Amen. You must live right. Get these guys out of the pulpit. Get these guys out of media. Stop supporting them. Stop sending your money to the heathen. I'm just telling you. It's full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. The Lord's saying that everything's messed up. It's messed up because we got people who are playing in the pulpits, who are playboys, as the gentleman or whatever you want to call this individual is, who now is receiving spiritual counsel after you got exposed. Well, yeah, it's called cover your uh, things that you need to cover. It's what I call it. It's just a cover-up. Well, Pastor, don't you believe in real repentance? Yeah, I do. When I see it, when I see it, when I see the fruit thereof, watch this. For both prophet and priest are profound. What did I tell you that word meant the last time I preached on this? It means dirty. It means to be polluted. The prophet and the priest are polluted. They're dirty. We got some dirty ministers. We got some dirty ministries. We got some dirty houses of God. That's why we're going through tribulation. That's why we're going to become blameless and spotless because we're going through the process of God to be pressurized to get it off of us, to cleanse us. We're going through a deep cleansing. And let me tell you something. 
God would rather you confess with your tongue and find a place at an altar or a place at your prayer closet and confess it privately. He would rather for the church to do that. But if you won't do that, you will go through the cleansing. And it's harder for those that are dirtier. Uh, come on now. Every mechanic ought to say amen. That's the hardest stuff to get off you is the grime of oil and grease. Are you here? Nothing wrong with mechanics, by the way. We love you. Thank you. Somebody write to me and say, what are you against mechanics? Not against no mechanics. For the land is full of adulteries. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Where did he find the wickedness? It wasn't at the porn shop. It wasn't in the seedy, dark places. He said, I found it in the house of God. Just the other day, the Christian Post had an article of a pastor in Oklahoma who just returned from a mission trip and he preached a message about being murdered and he was preaching about Lazarus and his theme and the main topic of his message was like Lazarus they tried to kill him because of him being resurrected and brought back to life and if you were living for God then you could be killed for your faith and killed for your presentation of the gospel the next evening, about one in the morning, an intruder had come into the house and shot him dead. His wife dialed 911. They tried to revive, but he was dead on the scene. And the Christian Post made the article that it was shocking to hear it. Even myself, I was and all because it's happening so frequently where persecution is on the rise. But one thing kept in the back of my mind was the wife. Just yesterday, an article came out in an update that the wife and the pastor was having a love affair with another man as swingers. And the wife and the lover decided to murder the pastor in which they did and shot him in his sleep. The confession was made and both are in custody and justice will be done. My point is this, when you remove holiness from the life of a believer, when you remove holiness from the message, when you leave out holiness from the lifestyle, then you receive the opposite, which is debaucheries, which is adulteries, which is fornication, and all the other lasciviousness that comes with that. And exposure will come to you, whether in this life with you here, or when you check out, the truth will be known. And Jeremiah could preach this message right now to the American church. Are you here? Let it sink into you to what I said of this free will Baptist pastor in Oklahoma who was living a double life but preaching so-called truth and folks in the house had no idea. You better know who labors among you. You better know who lays their hands on you. You better know who counsels you. You better know who prays for you. You better know who wants to talk to you. Is anybody here? I could go on and on and on, but I will not. The priest and the prophet are dirty. We got a dirty house, folks. We got dirty leadership. And let me tell you something. If that is an indication of just leadership, what do you think is running wild in the house? Because as the head goes, so goes the body. If the head is sick, so is the whole body. Isn't that funny? Your headache, your headache can make you debilitated and knock you out for the rest of the day. 
Ain't nothing wrong with my arm, but my head's messed up. Come on now. It's a biblical fact, but yet we accept it, and we don't mind walking around with a sick head. I'm about to throw this microphone across the planet. Are you here today? <laughs> we do. We, I'll accept it. it yeah. I, 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 I just, I just, I just I got to take a break here for a second. I'm about to explode. It is, I can't believe how people are so gullible and like hogging dolls, they just keep gobbling it down and they say, well, that's just my pastor. I tell you, it's my pastor. He's going through some stuff, but I tell you, he's a great man of God. No, I'm not telling you not to love him. I'm telling you to sit yourself down and go get you help. Because granny on the back row can preach better than you anyhow. Because she's preaching truth. She knows how to live this thing. I got to go. I got to go. I have found your wickedness out. Wherefore their way shall be to them slippery in the darkness. And they shall be driven on. Where? They're driven on into the abyss. They shall be knocked out of their position. They on the Babylonian express and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. We still have people messed up in the house of God due to the false prophecies of, 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 of this election and all these different things in QAnon, we still have Christians that need to be rewired. You're messed up. False prophecy and liars talking about rapture dates and all these different things. And the church has no discernment. Watch this. I, I'm going to leave. Verse 14, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers. Look at this. Watch this. Just give, give me about another hour. They strengthen the hand of the evildoers. This is how I know the connection is there between the world and the church and the church and the world. The evildoers are strengthened by the prophets and the priests who corrupt. In other words, if there's no preaching of holiness, if there's nobody being stern and staunch and, and powerful in the things of God and fatherly in being a disciple, then everybody will run wild. The Bible declares in Proverbs, without vision, the people perish. The word vision in the Hebrew means prophetic utterance. Where there's no prophetic utterance, I'm not talking about your false prophecies. I'm talking about the prophetic utterance of the word of God the people run wild and cast off all restraint study it that's what it means and that's why we're running buck wild in the church and buck wild outside of the church because we don't have stern discipleship any longer can find no fathers got a lot of teachers got a lot of wannabes but we have very few fathers that will lead us into truth but you strengthen also the hand of the evildoers that none doeth return from the wickedness. Why are we not seeing revival, pastor? Because we're living in a society where the leadership in the church is feeding the flesh and feeding the lusts and feeding the desires and we are just like they are. And they look at the house of God and they say, you are a hypocrite. I'm telling you, some of these mainline mega churches were Pastor Smoothie. Come on now. Pastor Smoothie, he just glides in. He glides in with $5,000 shoes. Some of y'all think I, I didn't catch that article. I caught it. $5,000 shoes. Listen, I don't care. If that man makes money and that man wants to buy $5,000 shoes of his own money, he could be as dumb as he wants to be. I may get a $50 pair of shoes, maybe, if I've been good that week. Is anybody here? I told you my wife's middle name is Clarence, and I'm right there with her. I'm not paying no high bucks. The other day, she come home with these brand new pair of boots, her and Abby, and I'm like, 
Oh, man, those were nice. She said, how much do you think I paid? I don't know, 20, 25, a dollar. Walmart had them on sale flow for a dollar. I'm like, whoop, whoop, Proverbs 31, whoop, whoop. Come on now, I'll take the 19 other dollars she saved. We go buy something else. Is anybody here? A dollar? And they nice boots too. Ain't that right, Abby? You see, but we can't find out. $5,000 shoes, and I don't know if the church paid for it. Maybe it did, but it's insanity. $800 shoes on the praise and worship leader for stinky feet. Y'all ain't helping me, man. It's insanity, Ronnie. It's insanity what we're doing in the house of God. And the, the world is looking at us and saying, how can you tell us about righteousness when you're just as nasty as us? You're just full of indulgence like we are. You don't show us benevolence. You don't show us holiness. You don't show us righteousness. you hypocrites, and they're right. Five thousand. You know how many people we could feed? You know how many pastors we can help around the world and churches we can build and orphanages and things? $5,000 pair of shoes. There ain't a pair of shoes on the planet worth that. I got I to gotta go. Y'all making me angry. I'm not angry at all. I'm upset. I'm like Jeremiah. I feel all out of shape. I feel all out of position. I feel all messed up because we're, we're preaching. We're preaching to a perver perverse generation. We're preaching to a terminal generation. They're not listening. And the church is just the same. I'm going to read to you an article and then I'm going to get out of your way. And if you have a, a weak stomach or whatever you think, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be shock and all or whatever, but you need to know what's going on out there in the world. And I don't even know if weak is, is, is a good word, but the rapper Little Nas X, did I say it right? Little Nas, Little Nas, Little Nasal. I don't really care. I have no respect for you. Little Nas X, N-A-S-X, okay? Whatever that is, learn how to spell. Little Nas X unveils Satan shoes that contain human blood and are limited to 666 pairs. Rapper Little Nas X unveiled a limited edition pair of Satan shoes that contain human blood. The Old Town Road singer. How many of y'all know the Old Town Road singer? Everybody went crazy over it. Help me, church. Everybody went crazy over it. Made a lot of money. I don't even know who he sang it with. Some other dude. Expected to release the pair of shoes on March 29th. That's tomorrow. As a, a collaboration with the custom sneaker brand MSCHF. Never heard of them. The shoes start at $1,018. They'll be sold out. They contain 66 cc's of ink and one drop of human blood. I wonder where the blood came from. The timing of the shoes release coincides with the release of Naz's latest video of him briefly, briefly in the living room. Oh, excuse me, I got the wrong part of that article. But briefly shows him uh, performing sexual acts with another man. Are you here? And in this article, watch this. The, uh, the video is called Montero, Call Me By Your Name which was released on Thursday, the music video shows him dancing on a stripper pole on his way down to hell and as well as giving Satan a lap dance. Listen to me. If you think the Grammy Award demonstration between those two lesbians was shock and awe, I suggest you don't even watch this video. It is pornographic. It is totally graphic. It is totally un-American, and it should be illegal. I said it. It should be illegal. 
It is not arts. It is not entertainment. It is not expression. It doesn't represent me. It doesn't represent this nation or the values of our country. And I want to know where in the world is Grandpa Joe and the entire people who are responsible for keeping our airwaves clean. You're despicable. The title is called Montero, as I mentioned earlier, which is his real name. He talks about his homosexuality, and he says openly, I have an agenda, and that agenda is to promote that lifestyle. I am sure the records and albums and all this stuff will sell because that's exactly the trend of America. You say, why did you bring that out, Pastor? I didn't bring it out for shock. I brought it out because we are on the Babylonian Express and this stuff is happening every single day. And I hear crickets when it comes to our major leaders and pastors, crickets from our politicians. It is not the freedom of speech to destroy our young children's minds. And how many multiplied millions of children will grab hold of that stupid phone that you gave them or internet access and watch homosexuality being displayed right before them and the power of Satanism released into their home and you wonder why we're going to hell in a handbasket. That's the reason, Mr. Preacher, do your job and preach the truth of Jesus Christ and tell the folks about sin. If you're watching me and you're caught up in that lifestyle or caught up in sin, listen, today is the day to make it right with Jesus. You don't have to join a church. You don't have to do anything but call upon his name and ask him to forgive you. He knows your heart. If you're sincere, he will be real to you. He's an awesome God and he loves you. If you're backslidden, let's fix this thing today. Don't wait another day. Don't go colder and further away from his love. He's waiting on you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Father, bless your people today. Help us, help us, Father, to discern and to understand the times in which we're living in and to live by holiness in Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I love you. Don't forget to remember the Harden family. Be blessed.